Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney. Hi. <laughs> Today's video is going to be about ColourPop. The good, the bad, the things that I love, the things that are meh, the things that I can't stand. So ColourPop is an online beauty brand. Um, it's been around for about four years. They are cruelty free um, and they're basically known for giving really good products at an inexpensive cost. So I'm going to give you a run through of all of the products and what I think about them as well as a demo of how to get this look. Um, I want to say that this is like my third time filming this um, and I'll explain why a little bit later. So if you are interested in my feelings and thoughts on some ColourPop products and you want to get this face, stay tuned. First I'm going to go in with the ColourPop brow pencil in the color black and brown. I love this pencil because it's really pigmented and most ColourPop products are pretty inexpensive. Then I'm going in with the ColourPop brow pomade. I actually have a brow tutorial which I will link in the description box below. Now I'm going in with the concealer and powder to prime my eyelids, all of which will be ColourPop. Today, we're going to use the Dream Street Palette by Kathleen Lights in ColourPop. I'm going to be using my Morphe M505 brush, and we're going to start with the color Shooting Star. And that's going to go in the crease, but also a little bit above it. Next, we're going to use the color Spark. This color will be acting as our deeper transition shade. I recommend building the color up slowly versus going in too heavy-handed. For me, it's always easier to put less and add more than to put more and try to take it away. At least most of the time. It sort of depends on your level of comfort with your shadows. Going back in with Shooting Star, we're going to diffuse the edges a little bit. Then we're going to take the color Water Bearer on any flat brush or shader and we're going to pat that color on the lid. This is another color you want to build slowly. Now I'm going back in with Spark. With a small fluffy brush, I'm going to use tiny circles to blend the edge of that teal color in with the coral. I'm also going back and forth between those two colors um, to make sure we don't lose any pigmentation as we blend and that it stays vibrant. Using that M505 brush, I'm gonna soften out any harsh edges. Then I'm going to lightly line my top lash line. Any liner will do. This one is a Smashbox Always On liquid liner. Now I'm taking this random small fluffy brush and I'm going to go in with the color Magical. And that is going to be our brow bone shade. Today we are using the Kim Tai Lionhearted Lashes from Cake Face Beauty. I do have a lash tutorial coming soon so keep an eye out for that. And there you have it. Alright, so I'm going to go in with my Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer yet again. So this is going to be an interesting situation. I've basically tried this foundation several different times. Um, originally I ordered, what was it, um, Deep Dark 145 and this is the color Dark 155. This color matches better, however this is the only warm shade that I could get before it got too deep. For my skin tone. Um, so with that being said, I wasn't going to mix, right? I didn't want to mix. I wanted to try to find the closest thing that I could find. Um, and even though it is $12, um, it's not returnable. So if I were to go ahead and try to get like the deeper shade, um, I already have the first foundation that didn't work, this one and that one. So if the next shade up doesn't work for me, then I have three foundations that I'm not going to use. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to prime, we're going to go in with this, and regardless of what this starts to look like, we're just, we're going to continue. So we will go in with a damp beauty blender. I am going to go in with a light layer. I'm not going to do too much. Please work. Please work. So my issue with this foundation was that it the first few times that I used it, it started sort of turning gray around this area. Like it went on fine and then um, it slowly started turning gray. So I'm going to continue on with the rest of my makeup and whether it does or doesn't we'll see by the end of the video but we're just going to continue on. Now we're going to go in with the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. This to me is a really good oops, shit, coverage concealer. 
Um, the only problem that I have with this concealer is it dries super duper matte and my under eyes need a little bit more moisture so this isn't like a go-to concealer for me. It does really well as a contour but just not so much for me as a under eye concealer. The coverage is really awesome but the problem is the dryness. Which wouldn't be as bad, because it is matte, it wouldn't be as bad if it didn't still crease. So it's one of those things where I do absolutely have to set it. So it's just kind of putting a dry powder on top of an already dry concealer and it just doesn't look that great under my eyes. I feel like it's starting to do it. Do y'all see that? It's like around my mouth is starting to turn gray. Let me try that. Another thing about this concealer is it does dry fast and it does oxidize. So it does get a little bit darker, which I don't mind um, because it's still within my shade realm that I like to use for concealing. Now we're going to go in with the no filter setting powder and we are going to set everything. I'm going to go in with the banana powder. Now with this powder, I do recognize that you have to do like a, a sheer dust over and not so much bake. Otherwise, it will get stuck. It's not looking that bad, so I'm just gonna go with the flow. It is turning a little gray in this area, which, you know, this is what was happening to me the first few times that I used it, but it's not sinking into my lines like it was before, so we're doing good so far. Let's try to get through it and like hoping, I'm hoping that like everything that I was gonna say about this foundation, I hope this application is gonna prove me wrong. Now I'm gonna go in with the Deep Dark 54 Concealer. I'm gonna use this as a contour. However, I'm going to be very light-handed. See, that's it. Not doing any more, I'm not doing any more than that. And I'm gonna get it before it dries. That might even be too much. I'm gonna take that concealer, put it on my hand, and then I'm gonna drag it down my nose a little bit. All right, this is the pressed powder bronzer from ColourPop in the color Rodeo Drive. Sometimes their pressed powders can be a little bit hit or miss, whether it's the bronzers, the um, blushes, the shadows. It's a little bit hit and miss sometimes, um, but this one in Rodeo Drive is one of my favorites. I like to use a little bit more bronzer on my forehead just because I have sort of like a five head actually. All right, so because I didn't get the uh, no filter setting powder um, in the dark color, I'm gonna use my Derma Blend just to set the rest of my face. I'm actually not mad at the way my face looks. I don't know what it is this time. It's not looking like, to me, it looks fine. The, the color is okay. like. I'm so happy that it's actually working this time because I really didn't want to get on here and be like, I hate this foundation. Moving on, we're gonna go in with the cream gel liner and this is in the color teaspoon. And I'm gonna use this in my waterline. I'm not sure how much of this you're gonna be able to see, but bear with me for a second. I'm gonna go in with my pencil brush. This is actually from ColourPop. This is the E10 pencil brush. So we're gonna go into this one. Mermaid Boy, which is like that teal, but it's a little bit sparkly. And we're going to smudge that on the lower lash line on top of the green. So you see how it kind of makes it stick, but it also kind of gives it a little bit more color, a little bit more oomph. And in all honesty, ColourPop shadows are pretty dope. I mean, granted they do have a whole lot of kick up sometimes. All right, so now I'm going to take that same one and I'm going to go into the color, I want to say Sweet Dreams, and I'm going to put that a little bit like below it with that same pencil brush. So now I'm going to take a thin fluffy brush and buff that out a little. I'm going to go into Kaleidoscope, which is like this, I don't know, peach shift I don't know what to call this and we're gonna put that in our inner ooh it's just giving it a little bit more life I love it look at that guys do y'all see that this is a dope palette like 
I when it first came I got this when it first came out and honestly it was one of my favorites when I um, first got it and then you know how you get more and more stuff and then they have more launches and all of that stuff and then I sort of forgot about it but now that I'm using it and wearing it again I'm like oh I have to put this back in rotation first off let me start by saying their super shock formula is one of the best formulas for cheek eyeshadows just anything this is probably one of the most buttery formulas I think ColourPop may have been the first brand that I've used that has had this formula so to me they're like the originators of like that cream to powder but it doesn't pull up your makeup sort of thing. I tend to use a really thick synthetic brush. So this is my BH Cosmetics number one brush. It's angled and it is really thick. It is synthetic. And this color is drop of a hat. This is one of my favorite colors. I think next to, what is it? The K-pop collection blush. Flushed, is that what it's called? This has like that sheen in it that gives your cheek a natural glow. So I am going to go in with the color Truro. This is the high, one of the highlighters I'm going to use. I'm going to go in with my finger and just sort of tap where I want it to go. But it's just so pretty. Like, I just give kudos to ColourPop. Like, ColourPop is really innovative when it comes to stuff like this. And I just wish they, you know, do more of, like, stuff that nobody else has. You know what I mean? I just wish that they would sort of start coming out with releases that are a little bit more unique, you know? Now we're going to go in with the, I want to say it's a loose, yeah, loose powder highlight. This is from the Makeup Shayla collab. This is in the color Bowman. And then I'm going to put that on top of that highlighter that we just put down. We are going to go in with their lippy pencil. This is in the color BFF3. I actually really like their lippy pencils. It's like really, really smooth going on. It glides on. Um, one thing that I don't love, you can sharpen these, but sometimes it does this thing where like it'll fall back, it'll fall down into it, and then you kind of have to shake it out. But the creamier it is, the easier it is to sort of blend in with whatever um, lippy you're going to use. Today, I'm gonna use their matte lipstick in the color Nulti. One thing that I will say about their matte lips is if you have drier lips, which I tend to have sometimes, I always, always, always use a moisturizer before you put on the lippy and you can either kiss it off or you could just um, let it sort of soak into the skin and put them on together because the matte lip will still dry on top of it. Let's set it. I'm going to set it with the Urban Decay All Nighter. No, it's not ColourPop, but we're still going to go with it. So this is the final look. Don't mind my edges, my curls are trying to come back. I don't know, I don't want to keep like flat ironing my edges so I might just have to gel those bad boys down eventually, not doing it today. I'll just let them live. How about I just, I'm gonna just let them live. We're just gonna let them live. I'm actually really, 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 really happy with the way this came out. Um, I don't know if the foundation reacted with my skin different or if it was the um, primer that I was using but whatever the case may be it was turning gray the past few times I used it and then today it just wanted to act right I guess if it does end up turning gray or doing anything funky I'll let you guys know in the description box below also let me shout out a few different things the makeup Shayla collab that they did I love this palette and this is literally a palette that I have been using every other day. I think she did a really good job in creating a palette that is great for everyday use, great for multiple skin tones, um, you have your daytime, nighttime vibes, you know, it's just a really well-rounded palette and I think overall, out of all of the collabs that ColourPop has done, the Shayla ColourPop collection has got to be my favorite. I like ColourPop palettes actually. Um, the one that I used today, of course, was the Dream Street palette and this is so funny because I basically have fallen in love with this again also I wanted to shout out their blotted lips people sleep on these blotted lips and I think they're so awesome <laughs> they're so awesome Zuma is one of my favorites it is supposed to be like a sheer sort of um, 
light wash of color on your lip but you can build it to be a little bit deeper um, which I usually do two layers on mine and it's the color that I want and it's just the most beautiful soft feeling lip and it's the most unique formula like I don't know of any other brand that has a formula like this I do recommend trying out their lip products if nothing else the blotted lip the satin lip the matte lip the glosses the lippy sticks everything I can talk about their lip products all day <laughs> All right, so let me talk about some of the products that I did not use or don't have. This is the, what is this, the No Filter Sheer Powder. I have literally used this maybe, well, <laughs> the few times that I've recorded this video. Um, and this does nothing. I mean, I guess it kind of does what it says. It is a sheer pressed powder. Sheer to the point that it's not necessary. There's no pigmentation to it. There's no... It doesn't mattify to me. It literally doesn't do anything. If you guys have had a different experience with the uh, sheer pressed powders, let me know. They do have, what are they called? The super supernova shadows. That's what they're called. They do have those. Um, I personally haven't gotten any of their supernova shadows, and it's mainly because I keep looking at them, but there's no colors there that I think are unique. So I have a ton of glittery shadows, a ton of liquid um, shadows and shimmers, and it's just nothing kind of calls to me. Um, I do want to try it, but they don't have any colors that I don't already have. So um, when they do start making some more unique colors and some different colors in that Supernova um, formula, I will definitely try those out and let you guys know what I think of them. All right, so that about does it for me, guys. Hopefully this video was helpful fun to watch whatever <laughs> hopefully this video was helpful if so please give me a thumbs up be sure to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video bye <laughs>